Welcome to the WIPFRAG Advanced Tutorial. In this video, we will cover all the features of WIPFRAG. To start, you need to create a new analysis by clicking the plus icon in the top right. From here, you have three options. Take a picture using the device's camera, open an already existing image, or open a demo image. For now, we will use the demo images and open Blasted Rock A. Whenever an image is opened, an analysis file is created. A single analysis file contains everything about the analysis, including the image, the scale, the net, the fragmentation information, and all the settings used to generate the results. You will notice that this analysis has a red circle with the number 2. This indicates that this analysis requires two more steps before it is considered complete. The three basic steps to completion are setting the scale, generating a net, and generating a chart. Since this particular demo image was taken with WIPFRAG's auto scale feature, this image has a scale already set, which is why we see a 2 here and not a 3. For more information on WIPFRAG's auto scale feature, please see the auto scale tutorial video found in the WIPFRAG reference library. Each analysis has a name, which is the image name by default, a thumbnail, a tag indicating whether or not the analysis contains BLAST information, which we will cover in a separate video, and a tag indicating whether the analysis contains GPS information, which this one does. To open an existing analysis, simply tap on it. Here, in the top right, you can see the two steps that are incomplete, which we will get to shortly. To view more information about the analysis, you can tap on the information button beside the analysis name at the top. Here you can see the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the material, not the camera. The heading which is the way the camera was facing when the image was taken. This is in degrees from north going clockwise, so in this case 42 is almost northeast. The camera distance from the material and the camera angle when the image was taken. The amount of time spent editing the net, which we will cover shortly. The camera model, resolution, and the date the image was taken. The image histogram which displays all the grayscale values in the image from black to white. And the image mean or average grayscale value. To close this window, simply tap anywhere outside of it. To rename an analysis, you can touch and hold on the name at the top. Enter a new name and tap anywhere to finish. You can use a pinch gesture to zoom in and out of the image, and you can drag using two fingers to pan around. Typically, the first step is to set the scale, but this image has that entered automatically because of the auto scale feature, so we'll cover this window on the next image. The second step is to generate a net. WIPFRAG 3 has greatly simplified how a net is generated by using a single slider. The previous version had three sliders and versions before that only had the six advanced edge detection parameters or EDPs which you can see here. It is greatly recommended that you stick with the simple single slider. If you cannot find a good net using the slider then you are probably better off finding a way to improve the quality of the image before it is taken. For photography guidelines, please see the sampling analysis guide in the WIPFRAG reference library. To find a net, start by picking a position somewhere in the middle, then move the slider to the right to generate more net, and move it to the left to generate less net. Try and find a net that outlines the majority of the material. 
Typically, you will want to find a net that gets the fine and medium-sized particles and then edit the potential mistakes on the larger particles. There are two types of errors in WIPFRAG, disintegration and fusion. Disintegration is when a single particle is broken up into smaller particles, and fusion is when more than one particle is seen as one large one. To help find these errors, you can use the block leak test function by touching and holding on a particle without moving. Once the block is filled, you can see potential leaks into other blocks, and you can even see its actual size based on the scale factor. Without letting go, you can move around and see other particle sizes. The last hidden function can be invoked by double tapping and holding to fill the entire image with hot and cold colors. The hotter the color, the bigger the particle, and the colder the color, the smaller the particle. For example, if you focus on an area that has a bunch of small particles but you see red, chances are fusion is happening in that area. The next step is to fix any major disintegration and fusion errors. To access the net editing tools, tap on the pencil icon. First we will go over what each tool does, then we will discuss how they are properly used to improve the net. The first tool is free draw. Simply touch and drag to draw the net anywhere you move. At any time, you can undo previous edits by hitting the undo button in the bottom right. The second tool is draw line. Touch and drag to begin drawing a straight line between the starting point and wherever you let it go. third tool is Block Delete. Touch and drag to begin drawing a rectangle. Any net within that rectangle will be deleted when you let go. The fourth tool is Lasso Delete. Touch and drag to draw a freeform shape that will close itself back onto the starting point. Any net within this shape will be deleted. The fifth tool is Lasso Delete and Outline. This tool combines Free Draw and Lasso Delete. Just like Lasso Delete, touch and drag to draw a free form shape that will close itself back on the start point. Any net within this shape will be deleted. However, the path that was drawn will turn into net. The sixth tool is Ignore Block. This will fill a particle with dark gray, which means this particle is ignored and will not be part of the results later. Using this on an already ignored block will unignore it. The last tool is Mark as Fines. This will fill a particle with white, which means this area is considered fines. That is made up of particles that size of one pixel based on the scale factor. To fix fusion errors, you can use the free draw or draw line tool to add net. Simply draw the net between two particles to separate them. To fix disintegration errors, you can use the Block Delete or Lasso Delete tool to remove the net on a particle. Net that does not create a closed polygon does not need to be deleted. The most useful tool, in our opinion, is the Lasso Delete Outline tool. This can be used to fix both disintegration and fusion errors at the same time by simply outlining the entire particle. Ideally, you should not have to spend more than 5 minutes editing a net. Only focus on the big fusion and disintegration errors. Don't spend too much time making the net perfect as it is statistically more accurate to analyze and merge together multiple images with quick editing than it is to analyze a single image and spending 30 to 40 minutes making it perfect. 
If you're spending too long on an image fixing larger errors, then you may want to look into improving the image quality first. When satisfied with the net, tap on the chart button in the top right to generate the results. We will go over the chart contents a bit later. For now, we will analyze another demo image by going back to the analysis page. As you can see, this analysis no longer has a red circle with a number, which means the analysis is complete. We will now open the Blasted Rock B demo image. If we go back to the analysis page, you can see that this one has a 3, indicating that all three steps are incomplete at this time. And here you can see that this time the scale has not been automatically set for us. This demo image uses Whipware's laser scale device. The image was taken at a safe distance with two green laser dots located in the image. The distance between these dots happens to be 30 inches. Tap on the scale length text box and enter 30. Then click on the units to the right of it and select inches from the spinner at the bottom and hit done. Now we must draw a line that represents 30 inches in the image. Touch and hold and move around until you are over one of these laser dots, using the magnifying glass to be precise. When you stop moving, the magnifying glass will begin to fill clockwise, and when it's full, the first point will be set. Without lifting off the screen, drag to the second laser dot, use the magnifying glass to be precise, and let it go. You have now successfully set the scale. A scale factor has been calculated. In this case, it is 317 pixels per meter. If you happen to know the exact scale factor, you can enter the value here, instead of drawing a line and entering a scale length. We will generate a net. Do some quick editing using the Lasso Delete and Outline tool. and generate the chart. Let's analyze one more demo image. Blasted Rock C. This image uses two scale references in order to correct for the slope of the pile. Without dual scales, the particles in the back would appear much smaller than the particles in the front, even if they were actually the same size. To use dual scales, toggle on the dual scale option. In this mode, you cannot specify a scale factor and must draw two scale lines in the image. Both scale references do not necessarily have to be the same length, but in this case, they are both 1000 millimeters, so we will enter that for both the upper and lower length. Touch and hold to find the starting point of one of the scales. Drag and release to complete the first line. Touch and hold to find the starting point of the second scale, then drag and release to complete the second line. Only two lines can be present at a time. Drawing a third line will erase the first line, and so on. If you make a mistake drawing the second line, you will need to draw the first line again as well. We will also toggle on the Auto Ignore Scale feature. This will automatically attempt to ignore the scale references when a net is generated so that they are not included in the results. Next, we will generate a net. As you can see, the scales were automatically marked using the Ignore Block Edit function. We'll do some quick editing.
and generate the chart. We have now completed all three blasted rock analysis. Now let's merge the results together into one chart. Click on the plus icon, then the folder icon to create a new project. To rename the project, simply touch and hold on the project name. Enter a new name Then tap anywhere outside the box to finish. Now we must add the three analysis to this project. To move an analysis into the project, touch and hold on analysis to pick it up. Drag it over the new project until you see the green down arrow to the left of the name, then let go. Do the same for the other two and we now have a project named Blasted Rock with three analysis. To merge the results, simply tap on the project name. Most areas of the chart can be customized in some way. If you touch and move around, you can see which areas can be edited by light green highlight. Simply let go over the highlighted control to bring up the options for that section. Before we get into customizing how the chart looks, we will briefly go over what each element is. Here we have the chart title, the chart text box, the chart size classes and percent passing values, and the main chart area. The blue line is the cumulative percent passing curve. The size and percent passing values you see on the right are what this curve represents. For example, if we look at the 100 millimeter axis line, we see the blue line intersects at about 66%, which we see here on the right, which means that 66% of the material is smaller than 100 millimeters. The red histogram at the bottom is the percent retained values for each size class. The left edge of each bar is the size of the virtual mesh and the height tells you the percentage of material that is sitting on that mesh but below the next one up. If we look at this bar here, the left edge lines up with 100 millimeters and goes up to about 12%, which means that 12% of the material is greater than or equal to 100 millimeters, but also less than 147 millimeters, since that is the next size class. If you simply subtract these 2% passing values from each other, 66 from 78, you will get the percent retained of 12. The dark red areas on each bar represent the percent of a regular material in the size range, which we'll explain shortly. However, the height of the dark area does not line up with the y-axis in this case. Instead, for example, if 50% of the material in a bar was irregular, then half of the bar would be dark red and half would be light red. These horizontal lines with a circle in the center represent the sphericity for each size class, which we will also explain shortly. Each of these line up with a histogram bar and work the same way. For example, the material between 100 mm and 147 mm has an average sphericity of 0.6, since it lines up with 60%. Now we will go over customizing each of the four editable chart sections. As you can see, the chart's title was automatically set to the project name. This will only happen the first time you open a project, so it is best if you name the project before merging the results for improved workflow. If you wish to change the title, simply touch and hold until the title area turns light green, then let go. Each chart can have up to two customizable title lines. To close any pop-up on this page, simply touch anywhere outside of it. Under the first two title lines, you can see that this chart is of three merged analysis. Beside that, you have the date the chart was created. Below this, you see the WIPFRAG version number and the name and company WIPFRAG is registered to. 
you can change the name and company from the main analysis page. By tapping the W icon, then the person icon. Here you can customize what values are shown in the text box. The items on the right are all the possible values that can be shown, and the items on the left are the ones that are shown on the chart. You can have up to 10 items visible at any time. To add a value to the chart, simply tap on an item on the right to move it to the left. As you can see, the chart is updated live as you are making changes. To remove a value from the chart, select it in the list on the left, then hit the right arrow. You can also change the order they appear by selecting an item on the left and hitting the up or down arrow to move it in the list. Now we'll go over what each of these values mean. Each D value will return a size where a percentage of the material is smaller than that size. For example, a D20 of 40 millimeters means 20% of the material is smaller than 40 millimeters. Sphericity is the average length to width ratio of each particle. A sphericity of 1 means the length and width are equal, like a circle or a square. A sphericity of 0 0.5 means the length is twice as long as the width. Coverage is the percent of the image space that contains analyzable material. A low number may indicate that there is a lot of wasted image space, for example, of the sky or the ground. Particles is the number of particles that make up the results. Irregular is the percentage of material that is of a certain color, by default particles with an average grayscale color of 0 to 64 are considered irregular, where 0 is black. B, N, X50, XC, and Xmax are all calibration values. XC and N are Ross and Rambler values where XC is equivalent to D63.2 and N is uniformity. The higher the value of N, the more uniform the material is, and therefore the more vertical the curve will be. Xmax, X50, and B are Swebrek values. Xmax is the largest analyzed particle. X50 is the same as D50, and B is a curve undulation and has no real generalized description. Here we can change what size classes are used. If you touch on the profile name, you will see a list of profiles at the bottom. The first one in the list is always the active analysis or project. The next four are global profiles that can be used to save custom sizes that are frequently used. Each profile can hold up to 25 custom sizes. Let's create a list of sizes in one of the profiles. Click on the pencil icon to rename the profile. Here you can select the units. We'll cover here where it says sizes in a bit. For now, we'll begin entering the sizes we want in the leftmost columns. Simply tap on a box and begin typing. Hitting return will move you to the box to the right, or to the next line if at the end. As you can see, the chart is updating live as we add new values beyond the first. For each size, you can also enter a lower and upper percent passing value that it must fall between in order to be considered on spec. 
For example, if we enter 90 and 100 for the 40 centimeter size class, then that means the percent passing value at 40 centimeters must be between 90 and 100 percent passing in order to be considered on spec. You can see here the text for 40 centimeters turned green because it is currently on spec. If you enter a specification for more than one size, a material envelope will begin to draw on the chart. We will enter one for 20 centimeters, 60 and 80. And you can now see that the yellow envelope is on the chart. You can also see that 20 centimeters is red because the value is not between 60 and 80 and it is off spec. We'll add one more to 10 centimeters, 50 and 70, which extends the envelope and shows as on spec. When a material specification is present, a new indicator appears under the text box. All size classes must be on spec in order for the analysis to be considered on spec. If we open the size class window again, you will notice our sizes have disappeared. That is because it auto-selected the project profile again. Simply select our custom profile again to see the sizes we entered. Now let's change the 20 centimeter specification to be on spec. And now you can see the analysis is considered on spec. Now let's save these sizes to our project. We want to make changes on the blast rock profile so we leave that selected here. Here is where we can select what profile the sizes are pulled from. Currently it's pointing to itself. If we change it to our custom profile, we can see the sizes we entered are back. If we make any changes or close the window with our profile selected, then these sizes will become the new sizes for the Blast Rock profile. Now, when it defaults to the Blast Rock profile, we still see the sizes we entered. To remove sizes from a list, you can either tap to begin editing a size and remove the text completely, or you can touch and drag to select multiple boxes, then hit the trash icon to clear the selected boxes. You can also reorganize the list of sizes by tapping on the size heading. This will force all sizes to the top and organize them in descending order. Lastly, there are three built-in size class lists that you can use. If you click on the sizes to view the profiles, you will notice that there are three extra profiles at the bottom of this list. Here you can select one of the three default size class lists. Isometric, Standard Imperial, and Logarithmic Metric. We'll select our custom profile again before moving on to the last customizable chart area so we have a material specification envelope visible. Now to customize the main chart area, we touch, hold, then release. Here we can hide the curve, the histogram, the sphericities, the material specification envelope, the irregularities if the histogram is visible, and the text box on the left. You can toggle off the merge result to see the curve of each analysis in this project. In this mode, the histogram and sphericities are hidden and the curves are the raw data for each analysis, regardless whether a calibration was applied at the analysis level.
Calibration is typically only used with Whipware's Momentum System or Solo Instrument. You can view the calibration manual by clicking here. If you happen to know the adjust factors, simply click on the calibration type and enter the values in the boxes that appear below. Once the chart is how you want it to look, you can share and email it by tapping the share icon in the top right hand corner. You can share it as a PDF document, PNG image, or CSV file. Both PDF and PNG will be the chart as you see it here. The CSV is a comma space value file that can be opened in Microsoft Excel and contains the fragmentation information for each image as well as the merge results in text form. The first row is the column headers. The last row is the merge results if you're looking at a project and everything in between are the individual analysis results. Most of these values we have already discussed but we'll go through them all. The date and time of each analysis, the GPS coordinates, the auto scale information, all possible D values, percent passing values for the size classes selected, whether each size class is under specification, a 0, on specification, a 1, or over specification, a 2. Whether or not the entire analysis is off spec, a 0, or on spec, a 1. The sphericities for each size class, the average sphericity of the analysis, the irregularities for each size class, the irregularity for the whole analysis, the red, green, and blue ranges that determine whether a particle is considered irregular, the scale factor, Slope and intercept if dual scale is used. The number of particles. The coverage. The time spent editing the net in seconds. The profile name. The edge detection parameters used to generate the net. The calibration adjust factors if calibration is used. The blast parameters if specified. The number of data points that row consists of. And the analysis name. If we go back to the analysis page, you can also share and email entire analysis files. For example, to email analysis file to someone or yourself, tap on select in the top, tap on the analysis you wish to send, then hit the share icon. Keep in mind that each analysis can get fairly large since it contains everything. So selecting multiple analysis to email all at once may result in a single email that is too large to send. Alternatively, Whitfrag supports iCloud Drive. When iCloud Drive is enabled on your device, all projects and analysis will automatically sync to your iCloud Drive storage. From there, you can easily access all your analysis on your other Apple devices or even a Windows computer with the iCloud application installed. This is the bridge that allows you to work with both the Windows and iOS versions of Whitfrag without having to constantly move around your existing analysis files. Before we conclude this tutorial, let's take a look at the map view and see where these images were taken. To view the map, simply tap on the globe icon in the top right. 
Here you can see a pin for each analysis that has GPS coordinates. You can touch and drag to pan around and pinch to zoom in and out. Tap the globe icon again to go back to the analysis page. This concludes the Whipfrag Advanced Tutorial. Thank you for watching.